You're listening to the Surgeons of Horror podcast. Hello, welcome to the Surgeons of Horror podcast. Its purpose is to dissect and discuss horror films, both old and new. Those podcasters out there that have been listening to the Surgeons rant and rave over the last next, uh, the latest season will know that we've been dedicating it to the late, great Toby Hooper. Um, and obviously he gave birth to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre in one of his earlier movies. And that gave us impetus to then delve a little bit into the Texas Chainsaw franchise. Uh, which brings us up to our latest podcast, which is to look at the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 film, which was essentially the remake of the original movie, and it starred Jessica Biel. Before we continue, my um, I should introduce myself. My name is Saul Murte, and I'm joined uh, for this podcast by Richard Lovegrove. Welcome aboard, Richard. G'day, glad to be back. Thanks, man. Thanks, thanks, thanks for uh, coming aboard. Uh, Anytime, always happy to bring a chainsaw along. Yes, yes, I was wondering what you were doing with that, and, um, and then I read the itinerary and realised. Yes, um, of course. Next time, <laughs> like, oh, that, to do yeah. man, I know what to bring. It's when you started uh, skinning that person next to you and um, wearing their face, I was like, oh. Well, you, uh, who, who needs you're a very face method, when you're wearing somebody else's face? Very, me- very method. Um, yes. <laughs> in your podcasting delivery. Um, so uh, I think I don't know. You, I always do this because I because obviously I'm I'm always the lead surgeon uh, for the podcast discussions, and I always kind of forget uh, which of my comrades have come on board for previous outings. So I, I want to say the last one we spoke about was Eden Alive. Was yes, that right? that's correct. Awesome. So you were that would be other Toby Hooper's film yeah. was reintroduced to me. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, and uh, I guess before I kind of tackle, and you may answer this in this one, uh, in this question, but before we kind of um, start talking about this particular movie, um, had you have you seen the original film, and if so, when did you see it, and your impression of it? The original film, uh, I actually saw only very recently. Okay. Um, yeah, I, all of the Texas Chainsaw Massacres were surprisingly I was deprived of huh. as, as a young one. It was more, I guess, ghosts and, yes. and those sort of happenings. But then when the slasher films came out, I was sort of introduced to even the 80s movies of um, Nightmare on Elm Street. And, uh-huh. You know, I loved the Freddy character and things. Me too. Um, well, the Hills Have Eyes, this is the sort of like territory it feels like Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre is. Yeah, um, Something that feels almost very similar to how the um, Wolf Creek craze took off in Australia. Yeah, yeah. This out back, like, you know, out in the middle under the sticks. Um, this Ed Gein type character who um, I think was the inspiration for um, Leatherface, or that's at least right. partially. Yeah, yeah, that's correct. That yeah, yeah um, uh, but that, that's sort of um, only when doing these was really when I had to go back and watch them all and, mm-hmm. and go, oh, okay, cool, okay, you've got to stomach that one and <laughs> only eat popcorn so that you know what's coming out and it comes out in a nice consistency. Yeah. Um, but after the, the Toby Hooper's um, introduction that way, seeing the production value, especially of the remake, yeah. I thought was quite good because mm. you've got the crudeness which works so much to the advantage of the original. Yeah. Um, I, I say crudeness as a as a stupid millennial I guess <laughs> you know, with my HD um, but, you know uh, it, it gives a good um, atmosphere to it even when yeah. we were watching Martin the um, yeah yeah uh, that, that film the feeling of the like student film-esque uh, thing really lent to its favour especially with the ending cutting it off so quick and dry yeah. nowadays we probably think that that was a rewrite by the um, producers or like you know somewhere down the line mm-hmm. but um to see it actually in an artistic way of going, no, no, this is where we want it to end because it's unconventional or it just serves the purpose of the story better. Um, it's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And then, um, well, we'll get to the beginning um, <laughs> later on. But, yeah, um, we will, we will. Yeah, so, uh, seeing, seeing these two movies, yeah, quite surprised and quite liked it. I thought it was going to be a mm-hmm. lot worse than so, it was. So, did you, uh, so in that rationale, did you watch the remake recently or had you seen that before? Uh, no, I'd never seen the remake. Okay. Um, I remember faintly hearing something about it because yeah, yeah. Jessica, Biel, Jessica Biel was the, the thing of the month. But yeah, yeah. after watching it again, the guy who played um, the uh, cop, um, I can't remember his name, but oh, what okay. you got there is a, it's your dead body. 
in that car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ar- Arley, Arley Emery we're talking about, aren't we? Uh, that's, that's the guy, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was a familiar face because in, like, you know, you've seen something with him. And, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. And so, yeah, that was a sort of a saving grace too with, with <laughs> seeing that recently. But, um, no, yeah. no, I, I've never seen either of them before. No, that's cool, that's cool. So you are coming in from the uh, very cold kind of perspective uh, millennial thing. Uh, <laughs> Um, which is cool because that's that's that is kind of good, that, and I mean that in all sincerity. Because when I um, when I do these podcasts, I do kind of, and maybe I'll get you to hold your uh, th- your thoughts on this. But I will ask you the question that I often ask: of Will this does this movie stand st- strong today still? Um, yeah. And uh, and it it suits you coming from that kind of point of view haven't Absolutely. seen it fresh so but bear that one in mind and i'll and we'll jump down to that down the track so Any excuse to feel young again i'm down for. yeah yeah oh dear don't <laughs> <laughs> where, where does that place me man anyway um a fellow young whippersnapper yes yes is that what that sunny um <laughs> so uh, yeah look um i guess uh, uh we should probably give this a bit of backstory because um, as I said, this came out in 2003. The original came out in 1973. Um, so that was a good, uh, what, 30, 30 odd years afterwards um, in between. Um, and there was a lot of, um, I guess, ambivalence about doing a remake of something of this kind. You know, and it's the usual kind of question, you know, thing that gets a lot of horror fans um, in, a, in a bit of a knot when something's been deemed as a classic. Uh, well, especially when you sort of do it in a, um, a shot-by-shot sort of uh, remake. Like, like uh, even, I don't know when Psycho was when they did the remake of that, but that got a lot of flack yeah. because it was, again, you're just treading on people's nostalgia there. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it's a recent film that's coming out, which is the um, Pokemon, and I saw a YouTube video just okay. making the comparison of saying that, like, you know, it's maybe good to take this sort of a route rather than remaking everything from the TV show that, like, you know, you could be treading on and... Yeah, and yeah, yeah, that's right. Get really that's good right. to do that. So it's, yeah, was this part of the time before um, Psycho. all the remakes were happening? Uh, well, no, the, the, the Psycho uh, remake, Gus Van Sant's Psycho, was 1998. Oh, okay. So this is uh, about four, four or five years after that. So, uh, but it was from a franchise. Uh, from the uh, so, what am I trying to say? From um, from a horror slasher perspective, it was the first of its kind to do the remake. Oh, okay, cool. Um, you know, I think uh, off the top of my head, Friday the Thirteenth remake mm. didn't come about. It was what was it? Ten years ago. So that would have been like two thousand nine. Um, and then the a Nightmare on Elm Street remake was 2010. Mm. Um, you know, so and Halloween's only just kind of was um, well, that, even that wasn't a remake. It was a oh, no, I guess the remake was uh, sorry, the remake would have been Rob Zombie, wouldn't it? Um, oh, now I'm testing myself what that one was. <laughs> um, Are you doing better than me? <laughs> Uh, I actually cannot remember when that one came out. Um, I want to say it was um, early, around that same kind of time frame, like early two. It's going to bug me. You know, like two, I want to say it was like uh, two thousand and seven or two thousand and eight. Mm. So hold on, what is and what did I just say? This one was um, two thousand and three. Yeah, so it definitely was the first of those big ones uh, to be yeah. made. So. I guess my point is, is there's a lot of people going, oh, you can't, you can't go there, you can't touch that. Mm. Um, well, that sort of sacred thing, especially yeah. in cult status. And um, and you know, throwing the fact that Michael Bay is attached to this as, as the producer, yeah. which um, you know, he he comes with his own. Uh, you see, Leatherface's face <laughs> transform into something more grotesque. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's just that you don't even see that, yeah. but. Um, it was actually surprising to see that because I, I know that the other film that we were going to talk about was produced by uh, Michael Bay as well. Uh, but like when the girl shoots herself in the back of the car and the um, shot goes through her open head wound through the back of the car as they pull over and the other girl vomits. I thought that was just very well put together cinematically. Yeah, yeah. I, I have to admit that was a bit what made me go, oh, that's different and interesting. 
Um, so there were there are elements to this movie that kind of still have the ability to shock and surprise, you know. And obviously that was the uh, I know we are jumping ahead in the plot line, but I don't mind so much because most people will be kind of familiar with it and just be kind of keen to hear our points of view. But the um, the you know that was a big twist as well from the original because in the original they pick up the hitchhiker character who's equally off his own nut, but he ends up being one of the one of the family as it's revealed and so it was quite refreshing to not only have a female be picked up and you kind of go oh what's going on here but then find out that she's a victim and um and whatever she has witnessed has been so traumatic Mm. that she sees no other option but to end her life yes um so it's kind of it was kind of um kind of cool you know absolutely yeah yeah well um Taking that sort of different approach, I think as well, it does that same thing I was talking about before. It it makes the viewer when they're watching it going, "Is this the same story that we have watched before, or yes. is this just another incident that was, you know, along the way mm. that we didn't hear about or we didn't know about?" Which is, I think, always a fun thing to play with movies. It's just like, uh, mainly with awful ones, yeah. it's a lot easier to go, "Oh, well, let's just pretend this is what actually happened," <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know, to yeah, fill in the yeah, blanks. Yeah, yeah. Um, but in this sort of a film, I think it works well because it's the same as when you saw, uh, again, going back to Wolf Creek. Yes. Uh, you know, an Aussie, Aussie film. We um, an Aussie film. The amount of cars you see in there, you go, all of those are different stories yes. and, and different bits and moments we haven't seen. Yes. Which opens it up for a lot of, like, sort of uh, sequels and things like that and prequels. But um, to see this and, and toy with the same motion of going, we're going to hit the same beats, but um, still do it in a slightly different way, yeah. I think is probably what weighs it to its like you know better stead, which is again a surprise that it's Michael Bay and everything's not exploding. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, well, I guess he's not directing it, so it's kind of a bit. Yeah. Although from when I was watching the uh, behind the scenes stuff, he he do, it does sound like he was quite um, present. Yeah, he was there in, in pretty much all of the uh, all of, as all the action was unfolding, you know. So yeah, and I know he hired uh, the uh, director for this was Marcus Nispel, um, yeah. and um, basically kind of hired him to kind of come in bo- come on board. Um, but you know, he he hadn't really done anything uh, prior to this, other than the odd kind of. Um, music videos and stuff that's kind of what made his name so it was a bit of a punk kind of pulling somebody in who was a bit of an unknown to yeah. do their own directorial debut oh, yeah just looking at his thing this is the first thing he did then after this yeah. he did Frankenstein I know uh, yeah and uh, you know but like more importantly I guess is that he was he also did the Friday the 13th remake yeah later on just before Conan the oh, Barbarian the Barbarian <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so, uh, and I no doubt, well, I know for a fact that I'm going to be talking about the Friday the 13th remake, maybe even this year, so keep keep your ears pe- peeled back Ooh. for that one. Um, but yeah, interesting that, that they would take a big part of that. And I know that he was, uh, the director was a bit reluctant to do this, seat, uh, do this prequel as well, but... Um, Mainly because it was a remake, or just because he loved the content? No, because it being a remake and being a... Um, uh, such a, like, I think because it's such a, it's yeah. deemed as such a um, cult classic. Uh, cult classic, yeah. And it was just like, well, I don't know if I want to go there. But what one of the things I think, if I if I'm correct, that swayed him was the um, the hiring of Daniel Pearl as the cinematographer because he was the original mm. cinematographer for the original film. Um, oh, fantastic! Yeah, so that kind of made him kind of go, oh, actually, we might be able to have a bit of fun with that. So going back to your comment, go full circle, about the cool cinematography in it, um, Mm. has a lot to do with um, Daniel Pearl's work within this. Yeah. So... um, Oh, and just even uh, on to Daniel Pearl as well, he did The Boy in 2016 with... um, He did. uh, I can't remember her name, but... um, Lauren... uh, Plays Maggie on Walking Dead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I think she's an Australian actress too. She's not Australian... Well, she's, I don't know, she has a, a strange accent. <laughs> she's, uh... I'm going to find out. <laughs> you are. <laughs> I mean, I'd be really surprised if she is. Uh, I stand corrected if she is, I should say. Um, <laughs> but uh, I've always had a bit of a, soft, uh, bit of a thing for her, I think. Um, 
There's, there's oh. something I find her quite intriguing and captivating on screen. Um, but there you go. That's just that's just my little thing. Um, <laughs> no, she was really good, and that's what I mean. The boy was really good as well. I'm, yeah. Every time I think of a, ki- a little kid in those style of films, though, yes. I always remember uh, the orphanage, a Spanish horror film, which is just brilliant. Oh, I love that movie. Yeah, it's it's so great, isn't it? Much, yeah, so so good. Um, yeah, cool. All right, we're we're uh, we're digressing massively, but oh, in sorry, a good yeah. in, no no in a good way. It's all good. So um, <laughs> the other, th- I guess, because we're kind of talking around casts and stuff, but like the other, you already mentioned Jessica Bill's attachment to this as well. Um, and so I mean, she is going to play our our lead um, uh, heroine in this film. Um, and what, would, it, would it be fair to say that she was primarily known for being um, in Seventh Heaven before this? Yeah, as in uh, that was how I remember her. Yeah, I seem to. She was in that movie, um, The Rules of Attraction, which was uh, based on a Brett Easton Ellis film. Um, I can't remember when that came out, whether that was before or after this, and I don't have the notes in front of me to, to school that Rules up. Rules of Attraction now. in 2002. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, oh, it was 2002, was it? Yeah. Uh, all right, so that would have been just prior to this. Okay, cool. Okay, so she'd already played like a role that was a bit more, um, I, I get a bit more out there and a bit more risque. So mm. this would have been quite a cool uh, transition for her. Um, yeah, well, then after this, she went to Blade Trinity and stuff. And so, that's right. But then she started right. doing A-League stuff like, you know, The Illusionist and The A-Team and Total Recall. Well, those last two, not necessarily <laughs> A-League. But, oh, they didn't need to remake Total Recall. <laughs> no, they really didn't. They really, no, they didn't. really didn't. It's like a Tarantino film. I mean, that scene on the escalator, yeah. I mean, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> Bloody everywhere. It's fantastic. Um, yeah. Anyway, sorry, we're digressing again. Back That's to chainsaws good. and people with other faces killing people. Yeah, look, so Jessica Bill's attachment to it. So, and um, I don't know. Well, be, like I remember when this came out, and I, I was quite um, enamoured. Yeah, I kind of liked her actually. So, in, in a very kind of um, hello kind of way. Um, so her kind of running around half the time in a wet, uh, wet white, kitten, white t-shirt was kind of uh, okay in my book. Um, yeah, but, well that's it. Like trying to also get that whole ass moment from the original too. Like, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. Um, okay. So um, and the other, uh, uh, probably worth mentioning Jonathan Tucker as well. Um, yeah. In this, because um, he plays one of the one of the other one of the other kids I kind of remember him being in um, was it the Black Don- Donnelly's I think it was in the Black Donnelly's anyway and he, but he was also in the Virgin Suicides and things as well but oh and he's, he was in uh, Westworld yeah I just saw that in his credits just now actually Westworld I don't know who he yeah. was in that oh hold on wasn't he the mate of um, the Ed Harris's younger character at the beginning oh probably <laughs> I could be wrong. Remember seeing it? I'd... Yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, look, he's he's a he's a player. Anyway, that's the point. Yes, he's a, he's a face people will recognise. Um, well, it, so. I also recognised uh, what was it? Uh, not so much now, but uh, Eric Balfour, like because he was in a lot of those things at the same time. He was just that quintessential look of yeah. of that greasy guy. Eric Balfour, yeah. So he was. Um, he plays the uh, the boyfriend of Jessica Biel in this, um, and I remember like my first reaction to him was, um, oh yeah, he was the dude that was in Haven, that kind of TV series that was based on a Stephen King thing. Ah. Um, well, I would have seen him in um, Six Feet Under. Yeah. Yeah, when he was on that as Claire's boyfriend. That's right. That's right. Um, yeah. So. Um, so he's again, again, like exactly what you're saying. He's one of those people that you know you, you pick up his face and go, "Hey, I know, recognise him." So I guess the point is, though, is that there's enough um, uh, talent there to kind of tick this one along, and it does follow us that you know we those that have watched the original um, will know the storyline anyway. Um, but it is essentially you know these uh, four or five uh, ki- uh, 
young adults who are um, backpacking and they're on the way back from Mexico um, to go to a Leonard Skinner concert. So oh. it is based in 1973. They are, there is a time setting for this. So it's not the case where they're modernising this in a present day no. setting. It, has, uh, it is arcing back to when the original was set. Uh, and it plays a lot on that with um, the fact that they are also um, uh, transporting marijuana. Mm-hmm. Back as well. In a so. big old piñata. In a big old piñata. Yeah. Um, so as they're driving through Texas, and so uh, this is where, as you said, they pick up the uh, the hitchhike, and we have the whole kind of uh, suicide. Yeah. Scene. You say pick her up. Should they almost run her down? They the almost run her down <laughs> in the car. That is true. That is true. Um, yeah. But this and, is. And for, I don't know how the hell she conceals that gun because it doesn't appear like she has a gun on her when she gets no, in the car. No, she does reveal it in a very kind of. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like, yeah, hey, it's all sticky. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, anyway. Um, so, yeah, so so we have the scene where she, she kills herself. They're, they're, so they're kind of left with this dilemma of what the fuck are they going to do. Uh, the, the group is already, already a little bit fractured. Yeah, with. this is where it really sort of sets into a divide, the yeah. idea of having the pot going, well, we can't go to the police because, you know, they are going to end up. Yeah. Ratting us out for that. Yeah, so in a way, that's. Uh, I guess that makes it. Um, I, I guess it makes their decision processing a little bit more um, valid. Yeah, I, I quite like it when like remakes do this. Like, because yeah. Evil Dead did a similar sort of thing. It mm. wasn't just them going to a cabin. Like, yeah. you know, in in that it was um, she was trying to get off either cocaine or heroin or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, it's hard. And so, it, yeah, she had to um, drop the. Um, the drugs down the thing, but it also explained all of the hallucinations, quote unquote, that yeah, she could be yeah. having was justified, and it could easily just be that she killed everyone in that cabin yes. and thought that it was demons. Yeah, that's right. I really, What's I, right I, I really world? liked that take, and I know it's been a bit controversial, but I really liked the, uh, the mm. recent Evil Dead. Same. It was uh, sickening. I, yeah. I thought it was great, but every time I watch it, it makes me sick to my stomach. And I think <laughs> that it's part of that—the cinematography working with the subject matter was just, absolutely. yeah, effective. Yeah, yeah <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Um, so this is where, uh, and this, you know, so the the kids are kind of uh, a little bit kind of not so sure what to do, and then they they get the bit where they turn up at the diner, kind of gas station. Um, again, reminiscent from the original, but this time there's a woman that's working there, um, and she mentions the sh- to go and meet the. Sh- she calls the sheriff and mentions that he will meet them at the mill. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they they're still stuck with this dead body in the car. So they drive up to the mill. Um, and they find it like yeah, no, him not there. Yeah, they find there's yeah, he's not but there. Searching through, they. Uh, get startled by things and then what was it uh, Jessica Biel runs off and goes oh look I'll go and have a look at it and it's, it's weird the sort of reaction they have because two of them sort of look over and say um, I saw something but only because the stoner guy says it she gets sort of quite upset at him just saying you're trying to scare me it's like yeah, but two yeah. people literally said they saw something there's obviously <laughs> something there she storms off after it and then screams for I still don't know why and there's a jump scare with rats in a locker yeah, 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 it's yeah. just like yeah, I don't know. It, it was a little bit weird. I think but it was that's a when misdirection, find, though, wasn't it? Because it was, you know, they do find the boys. So that's what makes it. Yeah, like it, it's justified, but it would have been better than rather than a cheap jump scare yeah. that resulted in nothing. They it, they yeah. actually had a diet in that, like you know, um, locker, and then scared, and he got scared or something. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, woo! Yeah, but yeah. again, that's that's the good thing about these remakes too. It is that sort of cheesy fun where I think that the um. Uh, the production crew sort of have that little inside joke of just going, yeah, well, people are just going to watch this popcorn just to try and get this sort of suspense going. Yeah, yeah, that's um, right, that's right. They give them an eerie set, uh, area and you're all good. Then you get Jenna Dyer out in the light and you see those teeth and you're like, oh, okay. Hello. Hello. Quick Hello, good sir. That's all right, I've yes, been here for years. <laughs> yeah, young Freddie Mercury. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Um, um, yeah, so who knew? Who knew that's where Freddie Mercury began? Um, <laughs> as in the backwards kind of uh, yokel in Texas. Um, yes. So, uh, 
Uh, Jebediah kind of mentions how the sheriff is an alcoholic here, and he's like, oh, he's at home getting drunk. Um, and then, I don't know why, but... So, we have we have Erin and Kemper. So, Erin... I'm just trying to get my facts right as to who these people are. Because uh, I haven't mentioned oh. their names yet. So, Erin is Jessica Bill, and Kemper is the boyfriend. Um, so, they basically go off. Uh, into the woods to find the house and they leave uh, Morgan, Andy and Pepper behind at the mill with Jebediah. With the car. With the car. And the body. With the And the body, yeah. So, interestingly, this again is a bit of a... It's trading a similar line to the original where mm. the couple go off, but it's the couple that go off that get killed straight away. Mm. Whereas this obviously takes a different turn. And I know if you're watching... I think people who would, would have been watching this who had seen the original would have been going and knowing Jessica Biel was the heroine because it's a bit obvious that she yeah. she's the name you would have going hold on are they going to do a are they going to do a Samuel Jackson are they going to kill her <laughs> off at the beginning yeah uh, deeply so yeah 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 well I, I really liked it when films do that yeah like, uh, the first time I saw that I think it was in Freddy 6 what is it Nightmare on Elm Street 6 Freddy's dead yeah um, uh, and yeah. they do that halfway through the movie the whole protagonist that you've been following just gets killed halfway through the, the movie because he's like no he's not going to kill me because I'm his son or whatever yeah yeah uh, again spoilers but anyway um, <laughs> he dies and yeah and then it's just like oh great now we're going to pick up another plot and like yeah. you know uh, reminiscence to uh, the Psycho yes. as well which did that so well that was yeah I mean that was uh, I don't know if it had been done before that but that was what was so famous about Psycho mm-hmm. you know where it did the whole switcheroo uh, yeah yeah that's how you do twists, people. That's it. Um, so anyway, so they, the uh, Erin character and her, her beau go up to the house. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, this is where they come across uh, a guy with no legs mm. uh, called Monty, who um, who's outside and he um, is needing their help. Um, so Erin um, kind of goes inside and is that right she goes inside first or yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, well they, they want to go inside and um uh, he stops the guy and said oh, i said right. she can the use the phone yeah, yeah, but yeah. so i i you, you keep saying like the the names of the characters and i just keep remembering not knowing the names at all um <laughs> i i remember him as sergeant dan or no lieutenant dan, oh, dan, dan. <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. But, wrong film but you know <laughs> That's right. That's right. Whatever, whatever it works for you, man. Similar, um, yeah. yeah. It's like you know that sort of old plantation style house. It's <laughs> that's right. <laughs> it's true. It's all um, one universe, really. <laughs> that's the twist. <laughs> leather feet meets leather. Sure, a lot of twist meets WD. Um, yeah. So yeah, so we yeah. get. So uh, she goes inside, yeah, um, right. and, uh, and he calls up outside. the. Yeah. the Sheriff, yeah. she talks to someone on the phone. This woman sounds yeah. like, yeah. and says it'll be a half an hour for him to get there. But then, then I'm trying to remember what happens. No, no, that's okay. So then we get the uh, I can't remember how it happens, but Kemper then goes inside to look for him. Mm. Um, oh, that's right. And he, yes, he uh, she finishes the phone call, um, and uh, Lieutenant Dan has gone to the bathroom and he's emptying out his colostomy bag into oh, the that's toilet. Right. And she he um, gets her to come in and help her. That's right. Yeah, which I kind of like as a, a side of a gore thing. Yeah. Like, you know, as in it's not gore, it's just poop. But, yeah. like, you know, the yeah. idea of going, that's that could be someone's ew as yeah, well. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, you know, and now pick me up with my bag of stool. <laughs> um, but, yeah, so she's doing that whilst um, he comes in. Yeah, that's um, right. So uh, he comes hot in. man from the noughties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he, he comes in looking for uh, looking for her. Uh, a good part, time. No, he comes in looking for her. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good goes, time. I, I want to hook myself well, with some whiskey and whores. No, yeah. yeah. Uh, and what does he get distracted by? I can't remember. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember. He does because again, it's the misdirect thing, isn't it? So he sees yeah. something, but then that's when uh, Leatherface comes out, hits him over the back of the head with something blunt, with a sledgehammer. I think it is. Oh, oh, that's a blunt as blunt can yeah. be. Yeah, and then uh, and then drags his body into the basement. Um, for a good so, time. For a good yeah. time. You go, hey, honey. Um, oh, what you go? I'm just going to take your face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Get a borrow this for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Of which he does. So, he, like, he, we see him kind of going to work. So, 
yeah, a bit of that action. Um, we also I, like it, like the other thing in this is that Leatherface has a name in this because his name is Thomas Hewitt. Yeah, they established this. And it's strange because I'm sort of getting them melded together with, uh, I think it was Chainsaw 3D. Yeah, as yeah. well. Like, yeah, I sort of just binged a whole bunch of trash after that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Did you? Um, oh. Where they try and do the same thing, but I think they change his name in that. Yeah, I think he could become Sawyer. Yeah, or become something like Sawyer, that. It's yeah. just like, yeah, just be consistent. The universe yeah, is just that's do it. your research. Well, like, but, um, but, that, but in that, though, so the, the 3D one was like a reboot again. Yeah, um, and, oh, and a re reboot. Yeah, that's right. And but the three D was going to be um, uh, is supposed to be a follow up to the original, and then oh, that's right, yeah. and then the film Leatherface was the prequel to the original. So that it sits in that universe. Yeah. Um, but interesting, you said you've obviously watched three D, and I, for love nor money, could not get a copy of that. Oh really? Um, even though I I bought it, and it doesn't work. So I was like. Oh. Oh. What region locked or something like that? Yeah, but I've got my, I've got a region free player, so I don't know why it didn't it didn't work. Oh, um, anyway, oh, it, it didn't that, work. What are you doing? I know. So VPN. So VPN. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So I've just decided I'm not going to talk about those two in in their in their franchise discussions because I yeah. kind of reviewed Leatherface a couple of years back anyway when it was released. So I'm just gonna. We're just gonna end the franchise discussions on this one. I haven't. I should have prefaced that. But um, yeah. yeah, if you don't like it, sue me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> um, so then we get. Um, uh, this is where the sheriff arrives. So good old mm. Arlie em- Emmy that um, you mentioned earlier. So a lot of people would know him from Full Metal Jacket. Um, mm. You know. Um, <laughs> I was trying to remember his catchphrase from that. You know, God damn it, pile! Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, um, it, it's always good to see him on screen, um, and uh, he kind of yeah really lived lived this, and he comes back for the prequel too. So spoiler um, on that one too. Yeah. Um, well. and he actually had a military background. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, which is why he was able to tune into the uh, into that sergeant character so well. I think. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Um, well. So yeah, so he arrives at the scene where the other kids were uh, to help dispose of the hitchhiker's body. Well, they're actually at his house, aren't they? Yeah, they don't know that though. <laughs> no, no, they, they don't know that. But because um, well, that's where well, everything sort of goes down. Yeah, that's where. Uh, she was out and everything like that. And the um, uh, when when he pulls up, it's it's much more like yeah, he's just sort of arriving rather than like he pulls up into a, a carport. Yeah, that's right. Rather than out the front or anything like that. And yeah. So yeah, it's from the get go, it's it's like something a bit sus. And his yeah. attitude, and he gets straight out of the car and spits out the chewing tobacco. <laughs> yeah, 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 and, it's, yeah. and it dribbles Jenny's chin. It was great, fantastically done. Um, but <laughs> yeah, it really sets up from the go. You don't trust this guy. No, no. No, that's right. Yeah. And uh, and and uh, the longer the uh, scene rolls out with him talking to these guys, the more evident that he's not necessarily who he's making himself out to be. And it's happening simultaneously whilst she's helping yeah. the old guy get up and stuff like that. That's and after right, that, right. she's come back out and asks where he's gone. And that's she goes, he goes, well, it's not in my house. And so then she takes off through the woods again to try and find him. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And uh, during that time, that's when um. Uh, Sergeant Man sticks the the police officer <laughs> takes out some what is it cling wrap and just says okay yeah oh, now we're gonna wrap a body up yeah yeah just that's just hilarious yeah <laughs> just like uh, cling wrapping this uh, dead body to the, to then dump her in the boot of his car essentially yeah openly admitting to Weinstein action yeah that's it that's it necro Weinstein action there we go uh, hashtag okay. that. <laughs> <laughs> That's so wrong. Um, um, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> wow. So that's what's happening to them. Uh, so then we, uh, we. I'm sorry. I kind of get in this the the, the uh, plot line a bit muddled up here, but I know that um, they end up going in, getting in the car, don't they, and driving it back to uh, the sheriff's house. But I'm trying to work out how that comes about. 
they searching for uh, Andy's Blondie. So Blondie, Blondie oh, yeah, yeah. guy, and and Jessica Biel end up. Does going he go back after to looking for um, his friend? Because he's quite adamant about not going. Yeah. Like, you know how Morgan's like, like let's leave him here, and the other girls like, I want my teeth still. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, and, and and he's like, no, 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 we have to stay. And he's pretty adamant yeah, about it. So yeah, yeah. Maybe he just goes off and looking for him. That's right. Exactly. That's right. Um, and so, but then that's the point where Leatherface comes out and he attacks Andy. Um, uh, Jessica Bill manages to escape into the woods again, but Leatherface catches Andy's leg with ah. a chainsaw. Yeah. Um, Andy, and then he carries him back into the basement and then powers him on. Um, on the meat hook, like the meat in the hook. Um, first one, like in the first one again, but with the gender yep. switch again. So there's a lot of the gender switching going on compared to the original. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and then Erin manages to get back to to the mill, uh, but just as she uh, and Pepper and Stoner dude are gonna try and go, that's when Hoyt shows up again, the the sheriff dude. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. And that's when he finds the marijuana on the dashboard. He orders um, Jessica Bill and the other girl to get out of the van. Um, and he gets stoned to give up the gun he took from the hitchhiker. And then he wants him to reenact the scene in the back of the van. And yeah. this is a really disturbing bit, you know, where he actually gets the guy to put the gun in his mouth. To, and he says, you know, and then show me how to shoot. Yeah. And, then, and then, but he does turn the table. Well, Morgan, the stoner dude, tries to turn the table and points the gun at the sheriff. Pulls the gu- uh, the trigger, uh, but it's unloaded. It's not loaded. And yeah. then he's just like, "What do we got here? Looks like you're attempting to shoot a police officer." Yeah. Um, so he they realise that they're probably fucked at this point. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's. When I, I like though how even with that moment as well, like they, the tension is built really quite. It's ramped quickly, but it's it's lingers quite well, as you say that sort of anticipation and stuff like that. Like you know, it's yeah. it's eerie, but um, yeah, that's what gets him in cuffs. Yeah, that's right. That's how they get him in the cuffs. That's right. So he knows that he's he's kind of got power over the stoner dude. Then, um, and then um, uh, that's when they go back to the hu- the house essentially. Yeah, taking the and along the road smashes yeah. his teeth open because he um asks, he says he's gonna uh, bribe him or ask for a bribe. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was great. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I wasn't expecting that. It was just like oh. <laughs> yeah, that's right. So like, so Erin and uh, Erin and Pepper are on their own though. How do they get left behind? I don't know. Um, I don't know. I can't remember how that happens. But anyway, so they're they're on their own, and so they. They're being tracked down by Leatherface. Mm. Uh, at this point, it's revealed that he's wearing Kemper's face as a mask. Mm. Um, and then uh, Pepper tries to make a run for it, but she gets killed by Leatherface. Yeah, and, and again, better in this where you don't see it on camera, like, you know, as in yeah. it really does lend a lot to this sort of stuff and makes it easily rewatchable and easily immersible when you haven't got something that's distracting you by going, showing you a scary image, like, you know, or something that, you know, curdles your stomach every two seconds. If there was a shot of a maggot or a spider up there, you know, yeah, like, you know, yeah, for yeah, a yeah. second. That's sort of what that gore does. It completely removes you from what you should be feeling and yeah. the immersion that you have either for the protagonist or the villain or the disdain for the villain, whatever's driving you in that film that's is right. better in that sort of way. Because I remember in that scene, there was like feathers that you saw coming up because I think she was wearing a jacket or something like yes, that. Yes. Um, but yeah, again, you didn't need to see that up close um, no. or, or anything like that. But um, then that, like a, a nice moment when like, yeah, as he said, he turns around, he's got the face on. Yeah. And it's like, oh my God. So I remember that face from the 90s. <laughs> Who, that young guy? That young guy. Um, yeah. He did everything. Uh, yeah, and then, um, so we kind of get a lot of guys are getting, uh, well, a lot of the characters are getting killed off. Yeah, quickly. Quite quickly, yeah. Here, yeah. Uh, Jessica Bill then does, uh, runs to that near, to like, she finds herself at this uh, like a trailer, trailer, around trailer yeah. with lights on. And there's this big, woman in there and there's a young younger lady and there's a little yeah. baby from memory 
Yeah, we hear a baby crying, I think, yeah, in the background. That's right. Um, and we actually discovered that that's actually the hitchhiker's baby, the one that shot herself. Mm. Um, well, she had a similar sort of um, a haircut, like, you know, that sort of a uh, bowl haircut. Sort of yeah, thing. yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Sheep sheared sort of one. Sorry, what was that? Sorry? A sheep sheared sort of one, but as I said that, I had shots of, like, you know, the Anne Frank sort of thing, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, don't yeah. go down that path. Like, <laughs> that's, that's, right, that's right. Yeah. Um, um, but, yeah, so then she sits in there and, like, has this weird moment where you think that they're about to play canasta or something like this. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, they're both eerily calm about the whole situation, even though you can hear his... I, or they would have been able to hear his, his chainsaw going a second ago. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, give her tea and things like this, tell her to calm down, and then she upsets the baby. And, and, yeah. Uh, notice she starts to get a bit, you know, of a drug sort of effect. And um, it goes in to see her holding the baby, but she's on the phone, even though she said that she didn't have a phone. <laughs> that's right, that's right. And she, this is where she realises that she's been drugged from the tea. Uh, yeah. And the woman says, uh, you're in the sunken place. Oh, no, wrong movie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was even having flashbacks of like it, and I was expecting it to have blood in it. Oh God! Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, so yeah, this is uh, this obviously they're, they're, this is where we reveal that they're an extended part of the family. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then this uh, this again was probably a nice touch again with from uh, that deviated from the original, in the sense mm. that um, there's more to the original family than, than yeah. we first you know the, you first realised so. Uh, it was a good, good twist moment again, but it was a yeah. good reason to then get uh, a good plot device as well to get Jessica Biel's character back into the house because she's drugged up and they bring her back to the house. Yeah. Um, and um, that's yeah. This is when she does come to again. She realizes that she's there with them, the entire family, family gathering. Hey. So we've got Never Face. We've got his mum. We got the old sheriff. We got the guy with no legs, and, yeah. and we got the little kid. Um, oh. Yeah, Jebediah. Um, yeah. And this is when, um, yeah, we realise that uh, the older lady is the um, basically one of the. She's the ma- matriarchal figure, which we never got in the original, which was an interesting choice. Mm. Um, and she kind of tells. Just could be all about Leatherface being tortured or stuff when he was younger because he had a skin disease. So we get a bit of a yeah. background to his character there. Um, yeah. Then, uh, then um, Jessica Bill's taken down to the basement. That's where she finds a- Andy. Um, yeah. And she actually kills him herself. Well, yeah. She tries to take him off the hook like twice. And yeah. even though when you're watching that, like, you know, he wouldn't be able to have a plank like to be able to support that weight so no. it's anyway um, yeah just those two moments of going <laughs> straight yeah. back on and it was just like oh god yeah just kill him it's just... like it's like when you try and hand a picture frame and it's never it's never right it's never right <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah that's I, it she takes him yeah. off those two holes but creates yeah. another two holes it's like oh for god's oh do you know what fuck it i'm not having a picture frame up there anymore yeah i'm just gonna it. kill you don't need to hang the picture anymore um but yeah so she ends his suffering by um by killing him essentially yeah. Uh, and at this point she then also finds Morgan who is handcuffed uh, somewhere I can't remember where he's handcuffed he's in a set. bath oh was he in a bath was he yeah I think he's in a bath and um, like yeah that's what I, I almost was expecting it to be the fa- the guy whose face was taken off yes ah uh, uh, yes yeah, I thought that was going to happen too I thought the guy would still be alive but with no face yeah uh, which actually had, I, did happen in the second movie where there was a character mm. that was still alive um, yeah. the, the LG character um, so um, yeah so basically Morgan's still alive at this point um, and this is where I started to have flashbacks of um, yeah. what was it Cabin in the Woods yeah where, you know, where he who rescues her yes. at the end yes yes I love that it. yeah it's so good uh, doesn't the, the kid the kid leads him out of the fa- the house at this point doesn't he the Jeb- Jeb- yeah, Jebediah well, yeah yeah because he's um Helps them, uh, leads them through, and then bites him on the hand as they're trying to go up the uh, staircase. Yeah, yeah. Look out! I've just paid my taxes. Um, yeah, yeah. 
So then, uh, yeah, but this is, they find themselves in like this shack of some kind in the woods and they try and kind of barricade themselves in, uh, but then Leatherface just kind of says, I've got a key to this place um, and he lets himself in. No, he breaks in. Um, <laughs> and that's where he um, he finds Erin and you think that she's going to be fucked. Uh, but then Morgan, the stoner guy, so the guy that has yeah. been saying, just let's let's run let's just leave this place let's abandon it let's leave that guy here let's abandon him yeah ironically he actually just saves uh erin's life and attacks yeah. leatherface um yeah. who just picks him up and hangs him on the chandelier with his by his huff, handcuffs and, <laughs> it, and then cuts through his groin with mm, the chainsaw as you do as you do um in fact, that's a bit of a nod to uh, Ed, Ed Gein, where there oh, was yeah, cause he had the um, body that was split into skin that was yeah, yeah, not like that. Yeah, so I think that's where they got that idea from. Yeah, uh, is my hunch. Um, and <laughs> so yeah, so basically the Stoner dude's dead now too. So it's just um, just leaves our friend Jess, doesn't it? As yeah, she, uh, Jessica Beale does another runner, and she ends up at the slaughterhouse, which I thought was kind of cool. Um, yeah, yeah. And we get her doing the whole. I'm gonna just hide inside this carcass um, <laughs> while I'm kind of freezing cold and a little bit wet, wearing a wet white top. Um, yeah. Where it, you kind of go, oh, that's kind of arousing, but oh, it's a bit disturbing because you're hiding in the carcass of a cow. Yeah, um, trying to get like you know that extra yeah. crisp, uh, nipple. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it there. exactly. But but you are still hiding in the carcass of a cow. How can we do it without looking like creeps? Yes, that's right. <laughs> she's cold. Yeah, she's yeah, cold. She's yeah, cold. yeah. She's got. Oh, yeah, she's in the freezer. Let's put yeah, her in yeah, a freezer. Yeah, I got a great idea for Saw Four. Whichever one it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So yeah. So Leatherface is chasing her through the uh, slaughterhouse, essentially, <laughs> um, and he tries to attack her. I think he actually catches her, doesn't he, as well? I think he's got, like, a meat cleaver in his hand. I think he actually catches her at one point. Yeah, As in, like, yeah. he cuts her, I mean. Um, he ends up, like, taking his arm off. Yeah. That's right. And, yeah, she turns the tables and cuts his arm off. That's right. Yeah. That was kind of cool. Um, yeah. And then she manages to get outside, flags down a trucker. So we're kind of getting a very similar ending to the original. <clears throat> um, I can't remember if she breaks through a window or not. Uh, can't remember at this point. Uh, probably not. A guy probably did it. Yeah. <laughs> um. But she. Yeah, she ends up getting in the car. She gets in the car. That's it. And then yeah, drives uh, away from the house, but they end up stopping at the uh, eatery. That's right. That's right. And then um, isn't it where they uh, yeah, but they he kind of makes out that he's. Doesn't he turn up? The uh, Hoyt character turns up and makes, yeah. and he, they're kind of looking for her to stop her. And uh, but she, there's a, uh, it's one of those bits where she, uh, we get, we find out that she's uh, not so pure as. Um, well, yeah, when she was trying to be, wire the car before, and yeah, because she, she said, like, "I learned how, you know how to do this." I was from Juvie. Yeah, exactly. So we know that she's not. Uh, and she might actually have a bit more... Um, she ain't a pure soul. She ain't a pure soul, but she might just have the goods to get herself out of this sticky situation. Yeah. Um, She's not necessarily in the seventh heaven, but the ninth level of hell. Yes. Be gone, the thou evasion. <laughs> Power of Christ compels you. Yes. Um, so, uh, but, you yeah, know, she ends up hot the car, she hot which is kick again, successfully. Yeah, that's right. And... Um, and Hoyt tries to stop her, but she just mm. runs him over several times. Yeah, repeatedly. Over the head. Over the head again. Squish. Yeah. Um, and then Leatherface turns up um, in the road and he uh, tries to attack the car with his chainsaw. Mm. Uh, but basically, she manages to get away, but she gets away with the baby. So she manages to get get yeah. the baby away. Um, and Leatherface watches as she drives off and goes, mm. God damn it. Um, <laughs> the two officers go into the house mm. to investigate, and it's done like done like a bit of a crime scene investigation. 
Uh, and then we don't actually see Leatherface. Oh, well, there's a bit of a snip, snapshot, isn't there? Because one guy's holding the camera and the other guy's talking to the camera. And then um, we ba they basically get killed by Leatherface and they, they you get the yeah. narrator kind of saying, this was the last account we ever saw of... Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, the narration happens. The, oh, that's right, it. yeah. It's up yeah. running straight through the other guys, of course, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he said the case still remains open. Yeah. Um, and that was it. That's the end. The end of that particular movie. Um, oh, it should have been the end. It should have been the end. Is yeah. that what you just said? It should have been the end, but then we got the beginning. And then we got the beginning of the end. Ah! And, oh, and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. And we won't delve too deeply into the beginning. Uh, no, we'll, we'll <laughs> I don't think we need to. <laughs> no. We'll, we'll, we'll touch on it a little bit, but just before we do, what, what was your thoughts on, on, the, on the remake when you watched it? Look, I was present, pleasantly surprised. Um, yeah. Maybe it was the, um, uh, the the budget, you know, that they had to be able to spend on an artistic vision on top of a remake because it yeah. was definitely not trying to just tick the boxes off. This one was going, no, nah, well, there's ways that we can communicate this story in a different way that has been done mm -hmm. while still paying homage to it. At least it felt very much that way. It didn't feel as well like you had to watch the original film to appreciate this. Uh, and, and even seeing the two of them as well, like, you know, um, there's homage as well as uh, in, in a lot of movies they're now doing it's just nods to, where it's sort of like, well, yeah, that's not a joke yeah. unless you've seen the film or read the book. Whereas this sort of stuff, it was uh, not repetitive whilst at the same time, same time still being uh, as engaging and having a new yeah. um, aspect to it, which I, I thought was really quite refreshing and quite good. Um, I noted the narration, though. <laughs> <laughs> the beginning, I think, was okay, but I just I wish they didn't have the ending narration. Yeah, I, I agree. I think it, it should have just ended with her getting away, really. I, felt, I think they were just trying to... Because you know the whole narration of the, of the original... I, yeah. think, I think they were just trying to do a spin on that, you know, and, yeah. and add another dimension of, like, you know, Leatherface is still out there somewhere. Yeah, um, well, at least they didn't have his interpretive dance. I think that that could have been a, a, a dangerous <laughs> yeah. sort of way to go with it. It's Leatherface getting jiggy with it. And, uh, no, yeah, no, exactly. No, no. <laughs> Doing, like, a whole um, Alice in Wonderland reboot where it's, like, the, um, the Flutter Water or whatever they call it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, yeah, look, I, I equally, um, I didn't like. I, I, I don't know if this is controversial or not, considering I, because I love the the original. Don't get me wrong. Mm. And what I loved the, uh, in particular about the original was the grittiness of it, which is absent in this. It's not as good. Yes. It's a lot more polished. Um, um, so it does feel like a different kind of movie. It does feel very much of the of the naughties, as we said. Yeah. Um, but I, I did enjoy it um, all the same. I, there's enough. There was enough marked differences mm. happening in this that um, that kind of make it its feel its own film. Um, yeah. Yeah. So it was. Um, uh, yeah, kind of um, kind of cool in that respect. Mm. Um, and you know, I, I was a bit blindsided by the Jessica Biel factor. I have to admit, but um, yeah. but I, I I came out of it going, do you know what? It, it was a solid attempt at, at a at a remake as you're gonna as you're yeah. gonna get really, yeah. um, which is kind of kind of cool. Um, I do want to um, just add too that um, the guy, the uh, the writer of the screenplay for this, uh, is a guy called Scott Kozar. Um, and he went on to write uh, The Machinist, um, but interestingly also did the remake, uh, wrote the remake of The Yamitable Horror um, oh. and the remake of The Crazies. Um, and he was also, he wrote a couple of episodes from Bates Motel. And he oh, also yeah. wrote um, the episode, the twin thing from The Haunting of Hill House recently. Oh, very cool. Um, and I believe he was a, the supervising producer for it as well um, for that so he is obviously still um, active but interestingly that he seems to have a bit of a knack for remakes or rewriting existing yeah. material so using other people's work yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's kind um, of yeah 
So, <laughs> yeah, yeah you, well, you know where I was going with that. Okay. <laughs> I was even going to say, um, Steve J- Jablonski, who did the music for it, because I always love um, yes. uh, film music scores. And besides doing most of the Transformers movies. <laughs> Michael Bay. Michael Bay yeah. Uh, he also did um, The Island, which I quite liked oh. when it first came out. That's a sort of monotonous theme. But he was a contributor as well on um, Team America in uh, oh, World nice. Police, the South Park film. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. <laughs> montage, montage. It, gonna have is a montage. <laughs> Shimona. I love it. But yeah, he's he's got a lot of names under his belt. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. So yeah, it's interesting. Like so, look, I might it might be controversial me saying this, but I I I did like the movie. I have to admit, I thought it was a bit of fun, and and had it as I said to repeat enough of a difference between that and the last one. Um. Well, that's it too. They don't even need to be separate films. I mean, it's not like you have to choose one or the other. Exactly. Two films were made, and we can appreciate both. Yeesh. Um, (laughs) So, obviously, as we've already mentioned, from the success of this, there became uh, how do we, uh, and they still own the property of of the Leatherface Mm -hmm. uh, stories. Um, So, and that's Michael Bay, obviously, still came on, uh, still on board as the producer and. And uh, New Line Cinema with the distributors. Um, so, all right, well, how do we make more out of this? What can we do? Um, you know, can we do much more of this? Leatherface has only got, got one arm now, so... Um, <laughs> <laughs> Not likely, yeah. The one-arm chainsaw bandage. Um, <laughs> so... It wasn't me. It was the one-armed man. <laughs> yeah, That's what happened in the 80s. <laughs> um yeah, so um, the what was I going to say there? So the uh, ob- their obvious direction would be to do a prequel um, and do a bit of a and I, I don't know why they do this, but they often have this thing about you know going to like the background history of of these the origin story the origin story. They always seem to want to do that, and for me, I I always have a bit of a sticking problem with this, and I don't know if you do too. Um, because part of what makes villains or these characters mm. so beautiful and haunting is the fact that there's that added mystery to that. Like the the, yeah. the unknown makes them more scary. Um, Absolutely. And where as soon as you start filling that up with like, oh, he was abandoned, baby. Mm. Um, you know, it just it kind of just just destroys that image for me a little bit. I don't, did you feel the same yeah. thing or? Yeah, no, I, absolutely. Like I, I uh, like you don't want to hear about like, you know, Heath Ledger's Joker's backstory. No. Like, you know, as in like, you want to hear about it from him, but you don't want to hear Like, you don't know, see episodes where they're trying to fill in the, the reasons why he got yeah. this way, where the, the, like, you know, makeup came from, where this guy's actually originated from or different ideas like that. I, I remember when Hannibal was, um, a movie and it was a prequel to the character and that's where it sort of solidified that idea of me going yeah no I don't like it when they they yeah shit all over a character like that <laughs> yeah um, where they just say oh yeah because katanas are in he had a katana or something like this and it's just <laughs> yeah, like yeah. no 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 um, yeah, and then right. they try and fill in this huge gap where it's just like and then he was messed up from this age to this age but we're going to only show you like 13 years of his life and then maybe some clips as a, as a child that's right um, but yeah, no, it became a pet peeve for me after that. Um, yeah. But the more I do it, I, I just feel like you have to laugh at it as well. Like you know, yeah. I said because it's, it's it's not worth getting upset about. But um, no, I, this, yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's, with this, it, it, it's not even that it's it's a bad story about him. It's it doesn't even feel like it's a story about him. No, it's a story about the um, the sheriff. Yeah, it is. And, it and is more family. of a backstory about how the sheriff basically became the kind of character he was and yeah. how he stepped up as the patriarch kind of figure when he has this op- opportunity to kill uh, a highway policeman and um, mm. steal his uniform essentially and act out like he's the sheriff of the area and then we also learn it's an abandoned area too like everything's everyone's moving out because there's no money in the in the town anymore Ah, uh, yeah. So we do get this, uh, and that's why they're kind of left to their own devices and mm. and all that stuff. And we're going to make this uh, farm survive, and you know, blah blah blah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, in that though, I, I I think 
in lesser hands, this could have been more painful. And what I'm talking about, I'm talking about um, Ali um, Emmy's performance. Because you can clearly see he's having fun. And I feel yeah. I feel like anyone else, it, it it probably would have just gotten a bit lost. Do you know what I mean? And but yeah, he, no, I, I agree he, with you on that. Like, in both films, character. he's consistent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's on. it's a good sort of thing because even like starting off, I think what is it, um, Lou Temple? That like you know when you see his face, you sort of go, oh yeah, I've seen him in things. Yeah. Even having him as the cop at the beginning sort of gets offed. It's like yeah, it's set up from the beginning that it's going to be this sort of a, a quick hack and slash yeah. sort of film yeah yeah um, and so I guess uh, the other thing that I had that nags at me a little bit is because it's a prequel we know that no one's going to live <laughs> yeah or, or we know what's going to happen to people, so yeah, when yeah. we see his so it's brother just about, walking, it's about what happens. You know how how are they not going to live? I guess, and yeah. so particularly when we get to the uh, the climax of the movie, I'm just like, well, they're going to have to do something because yeah, um, there's no way she can get away because otherwise they're going to pinpoint that family and the sequel will never occur. Yeah, um, yeah, we'll never be able to wrap it up. Yeah, that's right. So, so that bugged me a little bit because I'm like, well, you're not, you're never going to go anywhere. I think, yeah, even, even the introduction of like new characters, you're just going, well, they weren't around. <laughs> They're they literally just going to be the protagonists yeah. for yeah. like plot devices, yeah. so they can be questioning what this is exactly. in a, a verbal context, so the audience yeah. doesn't feel lost. So I feel like um, that was a little bit lost too. And yeah. and here's the other thing too, and I've I, I've asked this with the other podcasters who have joined me on the Chainsaw Massacre discussions mm. is that and I'd be interested in getting your take from an actor's point of view as well right mm. because um, what can you actually do with the leather face character because when you if you use uh, and, I, and I apologize for listeners because I am repeating myself from previous podcasts but I kind of like getting everyone's perspective on it um, mm. but like he, Leatherface is essentially he's stuck in that fa- farmhouse, right? That's people have to come to him yeah. in order for him to then kill them, right? So you, yeah. you, you're kind of a bit restricted in what you can do. Whereas the likes of Jason and Michael are free to roam the United States of America, killing at will. Mm. Um, so they they have a bit more elbow room to kind of go. Well, yeah, I'm gonna. Yeah, do well, it. so it, it's what, sort of yeah. So I always got an impression of like you know what sort of a good person he was because we I don't even think we actually see him without the mask and it's a good thing we I yeah. never want to. No. Um, but uh, reminding me again of, of what they did with Jason and trying to uh, like you know show you the backstory of what's happening in like yeah. Freddy movies or something like that of Freddy's uh, when they had the combined one yes. or something like that and it's um, I don't know I, I think that you could. One of the most intriguing things about Michael in the um, Halloween is that, yeah, you could shoot him in the eye and he'll still come back. Yeah. But you don't know how he's doing it because he should be mortal and everything yeah. says that. Jason, you know he's dead. He's like a zombie type thing. Yeah. But, you know, um, but I think the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you could play, like, as in it could be, it would be a very different story, you know, but... Yeah playing into the ideals of this guy more as like an Ed Gein sort of character, like, yeah. you know, maybe someone that you're not going to hear him speak no. like, you know, or anything like that, but you're going to see what he's doing in a macabre way yeah. and even yeah. play a twist on the whole Frankenstein thing even if yeah. you're doing it, then like, you know, you actually think that he's going to be nice and okay when actually he was just trying to set you up to eat you or something like that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but like, you know, uh, performance-wise, like, you know, I, it made me think of uh, what people do with uh, the Elephant Man? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just yeah. physicalizations, even within that sort of stuff. But yeah, yeah you don't want to make one of the most iconic horror monsters uh, uh, sympathetic to the point where you're actually wanting to cuddle him. And, and a lot of the times, like yeah. in in the the remake, when they're talking about him in the van, going the poor boy, he's had so much ridicule and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, that's what I thought we, we were, I was waiting for that 
in this. I was I was yeah, waiting for yeah. a more like Hannibal, where you're seeing him at a younger age, where he's constantly trying and constantly getting ridiculed to the point that he's getting more and more scars or, or some sort of crap. Yeah. But they never even went to that. That's what no. I mean. It was strange that it just went straight from the slaughterhouse birth, which yes. was very much like perfume, like you could smell the aroma in that place. But anyway, um, cutting to a bit where he was fired and whatnot, and like yes. you know, then cutting straight back to pretty much the exact same circumstances we saw in the remake. Yeah, yeah. And it, that sort of, to me, felt like a real waste of a film yeah, and also a slap in the face to all of the um, people who were a fan of that monster or this genre. Yeah, like, and it's yeah. a particular genre which is so, like, uh, has such a cult status behind it because of its, its extreme, uh, you know... Uh, gore and stuff yeah yeah or not, not necessarily gore but like you know the insinuation of such immense imagery <laughs> yeah 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 that's why i mean uh i guess the other uh, the uh with the i mean it's pretty much a similar kind of plot line in this as well in that you've got the kids that are kind of uh who stumble across the the, the house essentially um yeah. there is a bit of a vietnam war kind of um, backstory to this is where there's two mm. brothers one of them has for, has been to Nam um, and he's trying to encourage his younger brother to join him and it's their two girlfriends essentially that are going along um, for like one last kind of I don't know travel around Texas for some bizarre reason um, and they and they come across the uh, the family as it were um, and that's where all hell go, breaks loose. Um, we do get the um, so like our our lead heroine heroine in this is Jordana Brewster, um, and to me she was always uh, Fast and the Furious. Oh yeah, that she was from that franchise. Um, um, but so she was enough of like I guess of a of a face. Um, to maybe go, oh, right, that's that person. Um, yeah. she, she's okay in this, like, kind of... Oh, yeah, I guess I remember from the faculty. I'm the faculty, sorry, thank you very much. Yeah. My mind, like, you could tell I was digressing, because I was just like, what's the fucking other movie? Yeah. Um, yeah, the faculty. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. remember her face. Yeah, yeah. So she's like, like a bit like Josh Hartnett as well, where, like, these were mm. two uh, up-and-coming kind of actors, and then they kind of fizzled out into nothing um, and so at least Jordana's got viewers to hold on to and uh, Josh Hartnett well uh, what was it the uh, Penny Dreadful stuff was a bit of a return for him but even then that's kind of fizzled away a little bit yeah um, but um, yeah so yeah so my point was that yeah, so she's kind of our, our lead, and then we get um, the the other kind of there's you know two well got two guys, two girls essentially, um, yeah. and typical old recipe. Yeah, that's right. And so yeah, a lot of the drama for them is the you know around the, the two brothers really, um, yeah. and their kind of conflict. Uh, we do have another extra character or a couple of characters in the bikers, the biker chick. Who gets killed yep. off very quickly at the beginning? That's right, the asshole bikers. Yeah, that's right. And then, uh, but I mention it because you get um, because of uh, Lee Turgeson, who's yeah. who's the, uh, the the dude biker, um, and for me, he's Oz. Like he was in this in this the TV series Oz, which, yeah. I, which I absolutely adored. Um, yeah, I thought it was such a cool, uh, cool series. Weird to see he um, was in Weird, weird Science, Science as well. Thank you. Yeah, that was that was going to be my other thing. I was about to say. <laughs> um, yeah, so I don't know. He's, he's always kind of cool to see Lee Turkson kind of crop up. Um, yeah. Yeah, and um, yeah. So, like in in a nutshell, like they and I am kind of glossing really, really quickly through it. But the point is, is they, they all kind of get killed off one by one. Uh, in gruesome kind of kind of ways, um, and but like the, yeah, the, the comparison to the other one, this one you see them like get yeah, impaled on like chainsaws right. and stuff. That's what I was just trying to kind of have a quick look at what those kills were. Uh, yeah, I'm not too sure of the order. I just remember going, oh okay, again, ah. Oh. Yeah, yeah, 
Because there's a bit where the younger dude is like you. You feel like it's going to be the older brother's going to be the one that. Because mm, he owns up about he, he takes the. Yeah, the yeah, group. but he uh, but it's the younger one that tries to prove himself essentially. Yeah. Um, and he he's the one that essentially saves the Jordana character so that she can get away. Mm. Um, everyone, ah, oh, the gruesome, yeah, the boyfriend. That's right. He's in the. Um, He's on top of the rack, isn't he? And yeah. and the girl is hiding underneath, and then he That's gets it. impaled through the, with the uh, chainsaw from above, and she's oh. underneath as it goes through, which is very gruesome um, mm-hmm. and kind of cool in the same breath. Um, yeah, well, that it just reminds me again of the uh, first one when they're in the car, the two girls are in the car, yeah, yeah. and it's smashing through the windshield, and like you know that felt very heart racing. I, I thought that was really really well done. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. There's some good effects in this, and uh, and Greg Nicotero's yeah. behind that. So um, he's uh, he's oh man, he's like a, a bit a bit of a guru when it comes to um, to uh, all the uh, special effects and stuff, you know. Yeah, it's a shame there's no Tom Savini in there. No, no sex Tom machine. Savini, uh, no sex machine. Um, but Nicotero was um, behind The Walking Dead. You know, that's you know so yeah. Um, and like Day of the Dead as well, uh, so he worked, he did walk hand in hand with Tom Savini at one point, mm. and it, and has had his own effects. And the effects do look look good in this. And I mention yeah. it, I mention this because like as we get to the climax and we get the Jadana Brewster character trying to get away at the end, and you know you're kind of thinking, how the hell is she going to get away? And they did their story writers even had that same thing. It was like, well, she can't get away. How are we going to kill her? She's going to have yeah. to get killed off. And, uh, and they did experiment. I think there's um, there's some you can see some um, uh, alternate shots where it, you have a throat being slit mm. um, in the car at the, at, the, at the end. But they went and decided to go with the whole chainsaw through the body thing, which was a, seems a little bit like Alien, you know, with the um, John Hurt scene. Yeah, uh, yeah. With a chest burster, but in this case, it's a chainsaw burster. Through the chest yeah. from behind. Um, it was great. It, it reminded yeah. me too of the the legs. Um, the, the moment when, like you know, just to justify why uh, Lieutenant Dan lost his legs. Oh yeah! How did yeah. I forget that? that was, bit? What, was it? He was shot in the leg. Yeah, he got shot in the leg. He got a shot in the leg, and to like what you you're gonna bleed to death from that. So let's cut your legs off above the knee. Yeah, yeah. I, and then we'll cut the other one off while we're there. That's what I mean. It's yeah. just that doesn't make any sense. This guy isn't. Is it? Ah, is it even cauterize. Ah, it's so yeah, stupid. Yeah. He's bleeding out in seconds. Yes, I know. Uh, anyway, um, like, it was unnecessary gore for unnecessary. I know, it, was, it was kind of it was kind of funny. I was laughing my head off. Um, yeah, that's <laughs> it. Okay. It's strange too to see that this one almost had twice the budget. Of the first one, like it was the yeah. first one was nine point five million dollars budget, and this one had sixteen million dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I, I guess six, because they had a lot more, well, they had a lot of success, you know, with the first one. Yeah, uh, probably marketing as well might have gone. Yeah, into that, exactly, the exactly. Um, and you know, so it had a fairly decent run. This one in the mo- in the in the in the movies to before it dropped out. Yeah, well, the first one got back one uh, one hundred seven point. One million dollars, and the yeah. other one got fifty-one point eight million. Yep, yep. Uh, didn't get it exactly right, but <laughs> no, 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 that's right, that's right. Um, so, and there was plans of doing another, uh, a third film as well in the re- in like what was the reboot franchise, and I don't know why that dismantled, but they it didn't happen. It didn't oh. come about. Um, or quite what their idea was, I've no idea. Yeah. Um, this film was actually interestingly was nominated for the worst uh, prequel or sequel in the uh, Golden Raspberries. Oh really? Yeah. Did it win? No. I, oh. I don't know who won that. I'll have a look actually while we're having a chat in yeah. the background. So, uh, what was your? Um, I know. I know we kind of gloss over that in a in a massive way, but to me, it was a bit. It was a bit kind of paint by numbers. It was glossy over yeah. it. So, uh, what, what was your what was your reaction to it? Um, I, I, I don't know. Because um, I saw um, the remake after I saw this one, I sort of sort of very out of order. Ah, um, okay. 
yeah, oh, yes, I, that's I right. Quite, you said that the head. Yes. Uh, all I can really remember is is the remake, but this yeah. one's got a lot of moments that are really all gore based. Yes. Um, it's yeah, a lot of falls more into the torture porn kind of. Yeah, know, yeah, area, and, so. and the sort of yeah. uh, ex- explosions. I guess the Michael yeah. Bay sort of explosions, but trying to get it in a saw type aspect. It felt a lot more sawish. Yes. Um, Yes. Which sort of felt like it carried on over. I, I know it probably wasn't by the same people, but for that, um, the three D or the the next one that later on came, yeah, it sort of yeah. went a lot more in that Saw remake, yeah. a Saw, Saw sequel sort of um, uh, way, where it's just going to go cool. We're going to get someone nifty and trendy, and you're going to like the bad guy and be on the bad guy's side. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, whereas this one sort of didn't even have the bad guy. Like, you know, it, it alludes to the idea of you're going to see where this yeah. this evil monster has become the monster you, you love and want to see. But it's all about this other guy who we introduced in the last film. Yeah, that's right. It was that. Focus yeah, but that. by doing the same thing as well with the um, the, the large lady. Um, who yeah, is, yeah. They, they push her up against the, the door, the don't door. they? To, that's like, right, to pin chop her. Chop the door closed. Yeah, yeah. Right. Hilarious! Um, just shoveled her in there because she was in the sequel. Yeah, she was in the remake. That's, that's what I mean. They introduce these characters, and you're just like, "Well, they're not going to be around." Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the winner of the worst picture for the Golden Raspberries in 2007 was Basic Instinct 2. <laughs> it's all in the title, isn't it? Yeah. Um, although, having said that, like I, I thought, because when you make it to the end of the film. You can't help but laugh, I think, mm. at the way that that last little couple of deaths happen. Yes. Like, was it, she, you think she's getting away in the car. Yes. And then Leatherface is in the back. Yeah. Somehow, it, she didn't hear the chainsaw. No, running. I know, I know. Uh, it's, um, yeah, it, to me, it was a bit, it was a really weak, weak ending. Well, if, if it was just, uh, that's what I thought, like, yeah. too, but if it was just her getting killed by him, Weak ass ending, awful. But because they there's like two cops and a guy being pulled over, he's outside the car, yeah, yeah. And it swerves and it takes them all out. Then it stops, like crashes, and he gets out unscathed. And then walks along the road. It was just a car accident with a chainsaw active. Yeah, <laughs> like that's great. And then he walks slowly back to the house. I thought, yeah, yeah no, that's that, that's a, like a slow clap standing up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> that was just the pinnacle of stupid. That was yeah. great. Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, really. A, yeah, crazy yeah. ending. Yeah. But I guess they. But it did, and it felt like they were like, uh, how do we end this thing? I don't know. Let's just get Leatherface just killing a bunch of fucking people. Yeah, I wish uh, the whole film had that sort of mentality behind it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> exactly. I think it would have been a lot more fun. Where it's just like, yeah, and then like he spins around, and the yeah. chainsaw takes out like everyone's ankles like you know we did uh, we did neglect to mention the Lee Turgeson death scene as well where he's literally sawn in two um, by Cliffed Leatherface because they pin him to the chainsaw and start it up and, that's it and ripping it in twain um, yes yeah uh, which is a pretty kind of cool moment and I remember watching the behind the scenes thing saying um, uh, with Lee Turgeson saying that he was the first death scene by Leatherface that's right, yes. So, yeah. Um, it's kind of cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah. All right. So, uh, I'll throw the question that I said I was going to throw to you at the beginning. So, um, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, the remake, does it stand the test of time? Yeah, I think so. I think it's it, it opens it up to uh, a completely different, like, you know, group of people who aren't, I don't know, uh, ready <laughs> to see sort of older sort of ways of filmmaking yeah because i know even a lot of old australian films like you know wake and fright and stuff like that i still have to yes. go okay i need to get into the headspace to watch an old australian film on yeah. appetite that isn't ready for the sunlight that we give off here. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh within that like it's still like we were saying before, it's it's was still fun. You don't need to see the original. It's paying homage in a yeah. lot of different places, and it also doesn't have things like it doesn't have everything that the original does have. So you can watch that after this and go, oh, cool. This now I'm not looking at it like a '70s film because I've seen pretty much the same story in a modern setting. But this one has a guy dancing with a chainsaw, mm-hmm. like you know, and it has like you know a creepy guy cutting his hand up in the back of a car, like you know. Um, 
I, I think that it definitely t- stands the test of time. It's surprisingly yeah. so, because I was really skeptical, <laughs> especially after yeah. seeing the... Um, yeah, because you wouldn't come in from the reverse order. Yeah, that's right. I, I guess I went in it being sceptical because I was a fan of the original, but I remember being pleasantly surprised by it, and actually that was a better movie than I was anticipating. Yeah. Um, so I came in came from that point of view and then watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning and I went, oh my God, that was pretty woeful. Um, <laughs> yeah, cool. Um, so Even interesting too, I was going to say, with yeah. um, uh, Eaten Alive, because that's the yes. other Toby Hooper the sort of exposure I've had yeah. and it had a lot more coherence um, the original um, did uh, you know than um, Eaten Alive like you know that was sort of yeah. seemed like it was thrown a bit more together whereas this one the story sort of seemed to work and the execution of how it was filmed yeah. seemed to work better for that budget those lenses that time yes yes agreed agreed yeah no it did it kind of came together it, yeah it came together really well I thought um, mm. and I would I would recommend it to people and just say oh you know try and watch this and uh, I do keep coming back to like with the whole argument of remakes and saying you should never do it I do kind of keep coming back to somebody who was, admittedly was talking about theatre uh, yeah. but you know you look at Shakespeare's plays and they were there's been countless variations of Romeo and Juliet yeah, and people don't argue about going. Well, it wasn't as good as when it was in Shakespeare's day. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, and when people say that to me, I'm kind of like, no, yeah, that's a good point because mm. you do well, kind of need to keep. Especially when you have it as an inspirational again. sort of thing, like even yeah. with we're talking about Ed Gein, and yeah. this wasn't a, um, yeah. uh, a a direct Ed Gein thing. They just borrowed certain elements of it. But yeah. um, even yeah. the same thing as we were talking about with Hitchcock before, taking yes. elements from small little ideas that he's had and expanding mm-hmm. them into other things like North by Northwest and um, Rear yes. Window. I'm yes. um, just coming from those sort of small ideas of what if this, what happens? Yeah. Like, you know, where could the mind take you? Exactly. Exactly. And that's what really owes itself to this. Both the original and the remake, I think, will hit different audiences and would make them watch them for different yeah. reasons. But also, too, by the same token, it should hopefully give them the the want to see the the other respective yeah. partner for it. Yeah. Um, would you so, yeah. Uh, would you want would you want to see another Leatherface movie if it was to come about? Um. Well. It's intrigued me to see, as you said before, the film just entitled Leatherface, because yeah. I, again, wasn't really big on the monsters. But even when they started doing the Freddy stuff, because I like Freddy, um, yeah. I didn't haven't seen the remake of that. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know if I'm really, I want to, I would go out of my way to pay and see it. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, but if it was on TV and I wasn't doing anything, yeah, I'd probably watch okay. it. Okay. Um, I'm eager though to see what Leatherface is just because of seeing after uh, 3D and the way yeah. that they're trying to try and get this lineage of this different story on yeah, it. So yeah. I don't think anything can be worse than the beginning. No, no. I remember. I do remember being not that impressed with Leatherface though. Um, yeah, yeah, I kind of felt. I can't. I can't remember my um, my exact quote on it. No, and I think yeah. I think I mentioned it in the previous podcast anyway. But um, but I wasn't overly blown away by it. And as I said, I unfortunately haven't been able to get a copy of the 3D, so I can't comment on the actual yeah. action. Um, but yeah, so uh, I guess on that note, that kind of leaves us on our uh, journey into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise discussions. Um, yep. And uh, we can bow out there of Leatherface, whether he turns up Again, down the track is to be seen. Um, oh, well, probably. He probably will do it at some point, won't he? Um, well, it was interesting, like, because I, I love the uh, Hellraisers. Um, uh, mainly the, the first film was fantastic, oh. the Stenobites. And there was a rumour that at the end of Freddy vs. Jason, they were supposed to end up in the Cenobites world, in this yeah. hell sort of thing. And it was supposed to be the head Cenobite. I can't remember his name. Um who was going to be their pinhead, that's it, Um, who was then going to be in the the teaser for uh, another sequel, which was going to be the three of them. Uh, And I was like, that I would definitely want to see. (laughs) I I think, like, uh, and I had this conversation with another podcaster, but I feel like um, my hunch is is that we're going to see a a Jason film first of them. I feel like that's because, especially with the success of Halloween, and we know yeah. that there's going to be a sequel to the 2018 version 
next exactly. year. So going off the success of those two, you'd imagine that there will be another reboot Friday the 13th. And, yeah, and the horror and the scary things seem to be a lot more popular yeah, now too. So right. I think that those sort of movie monsters will never die. No. Because they're, they're now our Dracula, our Frankenstein. Exactly, our, yeah, yeah, that's right. Which makes me think that there will be crossovers at some point. You know, yeah. We'll see, we'll see. Cool, it also gives me hope as well that the um, the Universal uh, will try for more of those dark uh, movie monsters to be resurrected because I think that that'd be a lot of fun to see an Invisible Man or a, a Doctor Jekyll, Mister Hyde. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, but you, you know not the way that they were doing it. <laughs> yes, you know the Invisible Man is coming out. Yeah, they're still doing that. I saw a trailer for it or, or a teaser for it yeah. or something like that. Lee, someone Lee had put up on is, YouTube. Lee Wenell was behind it. The guy that originally um, wrote Saw. Uh, oh, great! And he directed more recently Upgrade, um, and he's been coming a bit. I mean, he always has been a bit of a player in the Hollywood circuit, but he's becoming a yeah. bit more prominent than he was. Fantastic! Um, and he's been given. I loved and, Upgrade. And yes, yes, very cool movie. Um, and um, Blumhouse are behind it too. Oh, great! Cool. Uh, so yeah, so it's got a good backing horror wise. Yeah, it. so it feels like they're. They, I mean, you know, if you're going to have anyone behind it, it's yeah. you know, that's successful at the moment. Then yeah, you can see why they would go with that route. Uh, whether or not there will be standalone films and or a blended universe, I don't know. But yeah, we yeah, will yeah. see. We will see. Cool, man. All right. Well, look, we should probably bow out there. Um, um, Absolutely. Thank you again for joining me on the podcast, and we hope everyone has enjoyed our kind of journey into the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise movies um until next time i am your host saul muerte and i was joined for the podcast in this episode by richard lovegrave See you all. goodbye goodbye good sir <laughs> revving of chainsaw sound effect you're listening to the surgeons of horror podcast music supplied by peter nezik for more discussions or podcasts Head over to surgeonsofhorror.com or head over to our Facebook and Twitter sites for the latest news and updates.